Hi, in this video I'll be working on the motor of a Hotpoint WF range washing machine. Although the internal layout of these machines, as well as the motor, is the same in a large range of different models and manufacturers, including Ariston, Indesit and Creda, not to mention other models in the Hotpoint catalogue of washers and washer dryers, so this video is potentially useful to owners of other machines as well. So, before you start work on any electrical appliance, first switch it off and if possible remove the plug from the wall socket. To gain access to the motor you first need to remove the lower inspection panel at the rear of the machine. The wiring plug from the motor is attached to a socket and take note how it fits because some like this one have an extra vacant position that would allow you to refit the plug in the wrong place. Now remove the plug and earth wire. Take the belt off the pulley by easing it towards yourself while turning it. For a more visual aid I've recited the container back to front so I can better show you how some actions apply. You on the other hand will be working within the confines of the cabinet. Now with the belt off, loosen both motor bolts by about 4 or 5 turns but don't remove them. With the handle of a hammer tap them back in. This will free the motor from its fixing to make it easier to remove. Now finish undoing the bolts. Hold the motor with both hands because it's heavier than it looks and slide it back away from you. If you know which terminal connects to the brushes you can test whether they're making contact or not by metering across them. If you get no reading, then you have an open circuit, which could be either the brushes or possibly the armature. When you remove the brushes, first unclip this little spade connector. Some have a locking tab on them that needs to be compressed before it will come off. Then undo the two screws holding them onto the motor housing. When you take them out, look at the facing edge. If like this one the brush is long and the face is smooth and shiny then the brush is making good contact with the armature and it's fine. But if the edge is rough and mottled and the carbon is less than one eighth of an inch long then it needs replacing. On the rear of the brush casing are locating lugs that fit in the holes in the motor housing for correct positioning. Before fitting new brushes, check the copper segments on the armature to make sure they are in good condition and not burnt or damaged. The tapered edge on the brush rubs on the armature and the lugs on it fit into the motor housing. When fitted correctly the brush should sit there without being held. Fit and tighten the screws then attach the wire. Turn the armature just to be sure the brushes are seated correctly before putting it back. This is the TACO and may vary in appearance from one motor to another. It sends information back to the module relating to the amount of current used to complete one rotation. In this way the module can determine if the load is out of balance or not and will either allow the motor to spin or restrict it to continue at distribution speed. This little bush fits on the rear pivoting arm of the motor so make sure it's there before the motor is fitted. Feed the motor into the opening and try to get the pivoting lug and the threaded lugs into the holes in the container. This may take a bit of jiggling about to locate all three at the same time, but once you've done this, replace the bolts and tighten them. For refitting the motor you may find it easier if the machine's tilted forward so you can get under it. Remember when refitting the motor plug that you could have a vacant position in the socket, so line up the wires on the plug with the terminals in the socket and you should be ok. And don't forget to connect the earth wire or tie the wires up so they don't rub on any sharp edges. The 
The job that seems to trouble a lot of people is refitting the belt, which is one of the reasons I've turned this container around so the procedure is easily visible. Loop the belt over the main pulley and use two cable ties to hold them together. Unhook the other end of the belt and fit the bottom of it over the motor pulley. Now turn the drum anti-clockwise, because don't forget you'll be doing this with the container inside the cabinet, so your only way of turning the pulley will be via the inner drum. The belt will now feed onto the main pulley and the cable ties will snap off as it turns. Now just align the belt on the motor pulley. All that remains is to refit the inspection panel and replace the top. On behalf of Selfix UK we would like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.